Hey, what's up, Gamers? Mystic. I am here today, finally, in front of Ignis Ferret with all of the many and varied materials needed to craft my revered wand. I'm going to go ahead and grab that quest and craft that revered wand, and then, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. So hang on now. Let me actually do the quest, and then we will uh, get on with it. Oh, on closer inspection, these weapons aren't as uh, legendary as I'd hope. I thought the Forge of Legends would produce peak legendariness. <laughs> legendariness, he's, he's got a new word there. Eh, let me think here. Jot down some notes. Okay, I've got some recipes to upgrade those weapons to something beyond legendary. Yeah, baby, beyond legendary. Let's go for the hype. But the ingredients aren't easy to find. One of them only appears in silver chests. You know, those little boxes with the four Which rocks. Which one is that? Because I can't think of any that just appears in chests. I always had huh. a grand old time with them silver chests. You're a lucky duck, because you'll be searching lots of them to get one reagent. And you aren't kidding, brother. You are not kidding one bit. Then you'll need to gather up the rest of the ingredients, take a legendary weapon to the forge, and craft something worthy of being revered. Okay, so we, we got the revered quest. Now let's grab the revered sword. I only spoke a sword for me. It's Storm. So I'm grabbing this recipe. As you see, I have all the stuff for it ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and craft the sword. And then we'll pop back here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to mark this spot so I can pop right back. Because as, as everybody knows, the forge is way over there in the South 40 to be doing this crafting with. But, hey, that's all right. Because we're, we're going to take the walk. We're going to take the run. And we're going to craft this weapon. And then, oops, on that guy's door. And then we're going to answer the age-old question. After all this work, after all this, and I mean all this reagent gathering, is it really worth it? So I'm going to come in here and craft this thing. Ooh, I found it. <laughs> Who would have thought? All right, I need a legendary sword. Here we go. Oops, I meant... <laughs> sorry, oops. I meant focus sword. I got legendary on the brain. There we go. The focus sword. And we are there. Let's check it out for a minute. Bask in its glory because, well, <laughs> crafting something like this is a glory. Let's lock it in. We'll even equip it for a little bit. Now, yes, yes, it does fulfill the requirements of sharp, because, man, there's more sharp edges on that thing than I know what to do with. It does fulfill the requirements of, for the most part, pretty, and it definitely fulfills the requirements of shiny. Let's pop back to our boy, Ignis. Ignis, yo, brother, I crafted your freaking hard-to-make sword. Here we go. Here it is. Ignis, see, I have a shiny one. Give me rewards. Now, ain't that a prize weapon? Look at it shine. It's a fickle thing, that Forge of Legends, that's for sure. Like it has a mind of its own. Yeah, there's some foreshadowing for the uh, future events. Ah, but listen to me blather on when there's work to be done. Thanks for helping an old man with his research, wizard. I'm proud to induct you into the ranks of the revered crafters. Congratulations. 30,000 gold, crafting slot, and two socket wrenches. Okay, great! Now we have crafted this magic, amazing, incredible, whatever it is, sword. Let's talk about, is this sword, I like how I went gray just there, is this sword worth it? Sure, I have crafted the quote-unquote Best one in the game currently. Quote, unquote. Fine. How long did it take me to make this, quote, unquote, best wand in the game? Well, that's what I want to talk about. First things first. Let's look at the stats of it. Sure, it's got a little extra energy, but if you have the pack wand, it has double the energy. Sure, it has fishing luck, but if you have the Corgi Pet, you have fishing luck. Sure, it has Pierce, but most wands have Pierce. Sure, it has some critical, 
but my Jack Hellas Whaler had four times the critical. Sure, it's got attack, and that is its saving grace. It has attack. Beautiful. <clears throat> it also has that, I'm sorry, but to my opinion, it's mostly useless, pip conversion stat. Pretty high stat. Great. It's also got the one power pip, just like every other wand ever made, well, every other wand of level ever made has. Now, it's a, it's a pretty nifty wand, I'll give you that. Let's talk about what it took to make this wand. For that, I'm going to go to the first site of materials required to make this sword. And we're going to go through a little time, a little time listing of what it took me as an average Joe to get this. I will meet you at the first site. Okay, here I am in Inner Athenor. I have come to Inner Athenor because currently right now, it's the best place to find any chance whatsoever of collecting this reagent. Ether dust. You need 25 ether ore in the crafting of this sword, as you saw in the recipe there. 25 ether ore. Now they very generously give you two ether ore whenever you craft the legendary version of this weapon. Sure, that's a good, it starts you out. Means you only need 23 more. Here's the problem with that. 23 more. You can do it in Aerial Shore, or, or actually, to be honest, you can do it in any area here. But I don't really recommend doing it in Aerial Shore primarily because, well, that's where everyone starts out, and that's where everyone is at when it comes to collecting Ether Dust. In the process of collecting Ether Ore slash Ether Dust to make this weapon, <clears throat> I found about eight nodes out of all the nodes that I made. I found about eight that were actually ether or the rare drop rather than ether dust. If you get ether dust, which is way more likely, it takes 15 of those to make one ether ore. Which means that if you, if again, on average, you collect, you have 10 ether ore that you have collected ahead of time, that's going to leave you making up the, the, the balance of that in ether dust. That balance, oh my goodness, that balance is huge. You're looking at about, oh, let's see, 10, let's see, 15. I collected 10, I need 15 more. To make, to make 15, you need 15 of these. So it's 15 times 15. All right? 15 times 15, if you multiply it, is 225. Now, you need 225 ether dust to finish this recipe. In an average run of one of these places, I'm, I'm gonna do this too while, I'm gonna actually do a little bit of this while we're, while we're talking about it. Go to a different realm. In an average run of an area, it will take you one minute, give or take, to, want, to run and clear the area. If I was on a mount, it would take me, of course, less time with the speed bonus. But it'll take you one minute minimum, even if you clear the area faster than that, because it's one minute in between realm changes, which is what you're doing here essentially, is realm hopping. So you're looking at an average, if you're lucky, of one per area, because these nodes only drop one ether dust. One, every one of them only drops one. Now there are two nodes per area usually, but I say one per area, because sometimes, with so many people looking for this stuff, sometimes you won't find any in an area. Somebody's already been there before you, and you'll run that one minute in that area and find none. Sometimes you'll find two, so that averages out to one. So just for this reagent, you are looking at 233 minutes average, because the eight uh, ether ore that you find are still nodes that you look for. So I count them in as one minute increments too. 233 minutes. You know what I'm going to do from here on out? I'm going to put a little running number up here in the corner of this screen for all the time that we are burning collecting reagents for this. Okay, let's put that 233 up in the corner there. Now I'm going to leave that up there until we actually get our full count of all of our items, and then at the end we'll total this up. All right, so that's just the ether ore, the first ingredient. 
Now the second ingredient, not so bad. You need 10 Tempest treasure cards. Okay, if you've got a little bit of gold, let's face it, you can go to the bazaar, slam bam, thank you ma'am, grab them Tempest TCs, no problem. They're really plentiful, no issue. So we're gonna call that no minutes, because well, it might take you a minute or two to go to the bazaar, but that's just really, really inconsequential. Let's go to the next item that I wanna talk about. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is a doozy. I am here in my Polarian shipwreck house because this is one of the places that you can fish to get the next reagent. And you can only fish or go to the bazaar to get this reagent. The Shining Scales. <laughs> I've got to say, I started out fishing for this thing. After the first eight hours, and only getting one, I gave up and took a trip to the bazaar. After about a half an hour of that, I got one, and then I, in another 45 minutes or so, I got no more, so I came back here and fished. Long story short, it took me a total of nine and a half hours, hours, to get three shining scales. Now, I'm, I'm hoping that that's not average. I'm hoping that's way above average because that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I fished for shining scales forever. Forever. You could get these chests that drop shining scales in the commons. You can get them here. There are several different houses. That's really not an issue as to exactly where you can get them. There's guides for that already. I think I've even put guides out about where to get them. That's not the issue. The issue isn't where. The issue is how long. It took me... Let me get a close-up on this. Dramatic close-up. Nine and a half hours to fish and get and go to the bazaar and get this thing, these three, just three shining scales up. Not only did it take me nine and a half hours, but luckily for me, I have crowns to where I can buy energy potions. I spent 5,750 crowns in energy elixirs to keep refreshing my energy because I have, and mind you, I have close to max energy. Whenever I have all my energy gear on, I have 289 energy. So I'm not just, you know, I, I'm not just with 50 energy and have to refill. I have almost the max energy. And I still had to refill my potions that many times. Which is, tw it's like 23 or something like that times. 23 times. I don't even have, I don't have a calculator for that. But 289 energy times 23. That's how, much, that's how much energy it took for me to get three lousy shining scales. Three. Unbelievable. So, nine and a half hours equals 570 minutes. Let's put it up there. <laughs> you guys are already looking at this thing with a big, big crazy eye. I'm sure you are. All right, that's fine. Let's go ahead now and go on to the next reagent. Now the next ingredient was the shocked key, which you needed 10 of to make this recipe. For the shocked key, I came to here, the Chrono Verge in the Ruble Waste Mirage. Just like I, uh, a little while back, I made a guide about where to get all these materials at, and this was the one I used because this place is great for shock keys. These, there's always a silver chest there, or on this side of the door every time you change realms. So there's no long distance running or hunting or fooling around. It's really just pure silver chest play to get these shock keys. It, I mean, it really is. You can also get these as key limes, but hey, you've got to deal with the time for those key limes to grow, to actually harvest. So honestly, this is going to be the faster, shorter, easier way. If you're any good at silver chests at all, I recommend doing silver chests. Now, for silver chests, because I was here at the Chrono Verge, because my silver chests are all close, I'm not counting any travel time. I'm just counting the time that it took to open a chest and move on to the next one. And you're looking at about one minute per. I can do the puzzles in less time than that, but again, you get that realm change thing that takes a minimum of one minute to do. So you can do a chest in 45 seconds, but you still gotta wait those extra, that extra 15 seconds to be able to change realms to go. So it's one minute per. I needed 10 shock keys. I got an average, I had to say, I, I felt like I was pretty lucky on this. And I got an average of a, of a shock key about every four chests. So 40 chests to do this, which equals 40 minutes. 
Let's put that up there in our total. This was actually one of the shorter materials gathering uh, times that it took to get the materials for this weapon. All right, let's go ahead now and go on to the next one. All right, the next ingredient, flying squid ink. Now there are, within Imperia, opportunities as side quests through Dusk and uh, that, that mayor in Nowhere and stuff like that. Through side quests, there is the availability to get 12 flying squid ink as quest rewards. Problem is, you need 45, 45 squid ink to make this thing. So, okay, fine, you do side quests, well, we won't even count the time it took to do side quests. They're really, you know, you could probably do them 15, 20 minutes, something like that. But we won't even count that time. We'll just assume that you've already got the side quests done, and you have the 12 squid ink, and you're ready to go for the rest of them. We are here at the secret tunnel in the aerial jungle, because this is undisputedly the absolute best place to pick up flying squid ink to, to fulfill this material requirement. Now... You needed 45. You got 12 from the side quests, and that means you need 33 more flying squid ink. All right. You can do a secret tunnel run here. And in a secret tunnel runs that I did, I, uh, I, I did it by six rather than three, but I'm going to break it back down into threes just for, just, for, just for continuity's sake. All right. Breaking it down. I got about one and a half squid ink per run average about about one and a half so you fight three fights i got one and a half average sometimes i got one sometimes i got two sometimes i got three but it breaks down to one and a half squid ink average per run all right you needed to get 33 at one and a half that's 22 runs now i timed 10 runs that we made here and the average time with a competent team is seven minutes. So what this all adds up to is it'll take you 154 minutes to get the other 33 required squid ink. Let's pop that up in the corner. All right, the next ingredient is the amethyst. Flawless amethyst that you're going to need for this. Again, just like with the, the Tempest Treasure cards, the Flawless Amethyst, so long as you've got a little bit of gold, is no problem. You can go and buy it from the vendor in Celestia. You can, if you want to spend more money and not travel, go and buy it from the, from the bazaar. If it's there, that's cool either way. But regardless of all that, you can buy that. Again, a couple of minutes of travel there, whatever the deal, you know. Spend your gold, off you go. So we're not going to count that as any time. We're, we're going to say zero minutes. We're going to be... Really generous with this one, say zero minutes. So zero minutes for that one. Now, the big boy of this whole debacle. Let's go there and talk about that. Here we are at the arena. This is the subject of the most controversy ever regarding this crafted weapon. It takes five participation trophies. The voices of the people who do not PvP or do not pet derby have been loud <laughs> and ongoing. However, they have st apparently still not yet reached King's Isle's ears. Let's just say for a minute that you do have the capability to at least rudimentarily PvP. And you see no other choice but to go through that process to craft this weapon. Let's also assume, again, as an average thing, and we're going to talk about this at the end, as an average thing that you don't have crowns to spend on the bonus draws at the end of the tournament. Let's say that you don't. Let's say that you have to do just pure PvP to get the tickets needed. You need five participation trophies. Nigel Higginbottom over the Pet Pavilion will sell you those participation trophies for 800 tickets apiece. So times five, that's 4,000 tickets that you need. Let's assume again that you're not really into PvP and you don't have any arena tickets on hand. I happen to have had about 5,000 myself, so I saved a lot of time on this and I had to ask some PvP experts about how much time things would take. Because guys, I really honestly, I don't PvP every day. 
And well, sometimes you got to source outside and get some research done to find out your numbers. All right. This is what I got from the people who told me. The average, the average you come away with in a PvP tourney is 550 tickets. That's assuming you don't win or place, you know, second or third, and you don't really, really, really do poorly, you know, and you're down in 11th or 16th or whatever. Let's just say your average, right in the middle, 550 tickets. Okay, 550 tickets. It will take you eight tournaments to get the 4,000. You'll actually be a little bit over 4,000, but seven doesn't give you enough. So it takes eight runs. Eight tournaments to get your 4,000 tickets. Okay. Oh, well, I'm good. Eight tournaments doesn't sound bad, but each tournament lasts an average of an hour and a half. So again, you're looking at huge, huge hours. All those hours broken down into minutes, let's put it up here on the total of the board, is 720 minutes that it takes to get those 4,000 tickets to go and get these five participation trophies. And again, that's, only, that's if you do average at PvP. If you're really, really poor, well, it's going to take more. If you're good, to be fair, if you're good, it's going to take less time. A lot less time. But, well, those who are good at PvP wouldn't be complaining about getting the participation trophies in the first place. Now, you can also get a participation trophy, for, from what I hear, from the daily assignments. But, guys, come on now. You're drawn from a huge, huge pool of stuff in the daily assignment rewards. So, sure, you might get one, but you're going to be waiting for a minute for it, unless you're insanely lucky. I don't see where you get five anyway from that whole process. All right, so we've got all these times up on the board. Now, let's talk about the last item that you need. You also need Ioni's legendary version of this sword as part of the recipe. That in itself is a whole bunch of crafting. It takes stardust and, and various other things, astral shards, whatnot like that. Let's just assume, I'm trying to be a little bit conservative here and not be too, too extreme about this. Let's be conservative here and say that you had some of the mats. You already had them. I mean, let's, let's face it. We've been collecting astral shards and comet tails and all that crap for a while now. We have been. So some of us got a lot on hand. Not only that, because it's an older mat, you can find them at the bazaar without too, too, too much looking. So you can get them. Let's say that you craft the legendary version of this sword, and the entire version of it, to all those masks, get all this stuff together and craft it, took you 60 minutes. Let's put that up on the board. All right, now, that's all the materials that you need to craft this sword, but let's total this bad boy up. You've got 233, you've got 570, you've got 40, you've got 154, you've got 720, and you've got 60. All of those. That's, that just it just blows me away. Oh yeah, I forgot. You got you got the ether ore time too. All right, all of those together equal seventeen hundred and seventy-seven minutes. One thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven minutes. Breaking that down into hours, you're looking at twenty-nine point six hours to craft this weapon. Twenty-nine point six hours, and again, that's only. If you're at an average for it, if you're, you know, maybe you got the crowns to, to do to uh, buy the extra chests and save time on that. Maybe you've got the crowns to, like I did, burn lots and lots and lots and lots of energy to do that. Then again, maybe you don't, which means it's going to take double that. This is an average middle of the road time. 29.6 hours to make this weapon. Now, let's go Let's go ahead real quick and compare this weapon. I'm going to pop over to the dorms because I don't have one on me. And compare this weapon to, oh, let's say, let's say the Darkmoor Wand. All right? Let's compare it to that. Let me pop over there and we'll pick. I'll pick one up and we'll check it out. All right, I was wrong. I didn't have my Darkmoor Wand at my dorm house. I had it here at this house. I had to take, <laughs> took me a second to find it. But regardless of that, now a lot of people are using the fortune teller's wands as far as that goes because they're a little bit better. But again, we're assuming you don't have crowns to do stuff with. So here we are with Dark War wand. Okay, sure, we got energy, we got fishing luck, cool. But we got a lot less pierce. 
In fact, 7% less. We've got a little bit less critical at 40 points. Sure, we don't have the attack bonus that we have with the, with the new revered wand. And we don't have the <laughs> pip conversion bonus that we have with the revered wand. We don't have those things, sure. But we have some block that we don't have at all with the revered wand. And it's true, you know, we have, a, we have less attack with the Dragon's Maw staff, but we have 7% less. All right. It basically gives the same spell cards. Cool, cool. Now, that's a dropped wand. Of course, the Fortune Teller's wand is even better than that, especially with the Maycast. So what we're looking at here, let, let's, let's do a summary on this. We're talking about 29.6 hours to craft this, and it's only slightly better than what you can get out of packs, and it's only a little more than slightly better what you can get from Darkmoor. 29.6 hours average. <sighs> I've got to say, if this wand had been substantially, and I mean substantially better in all areas, okay? I don't care about having fishing luck on my wand. I really don't. I've got other things for fishing luck. I've got pets for that. You know, I've got drop gear for that. I don't really feel that's, that's an issue. The 11%, that's fine for those who don't have the pack wand, the snow drifters wand, which is again, double the energy. Those things are fine, but I would want to see for, for my time, honestly, I don't know about you guys' time, but mine is really, really limited. The only reason, to be honest, that I crafted this wand was to make this video for you guys to see. If you've got a lot of crowns to burn, <laughs> who'd have thought? Sure, you can shorten your time, but the average time, 29.6 hours. Again, if they had made the stats on this thing better largely overall to where you could carry this wand for a long, long time, not that we're not going to be carrying it until Imperial Part 2, which is going to be a long, long time, but not really a long, long time. I mean something where it had 20 points better in everything. Then I could see spending 30 hours of my life to craft this wand. Otherwise, guys, if you really have anything at all to do in Wizard 101, I personally, I've got to say, I don't know about crafting these things. Man! I mean, just... Just the aggravation alone. <laughs> I really honestly don't know. If you're one of those people, you know, you've got everything done in the game and you've got nothing to do, and you want to spend time doing this, hang out with your friends, you know, shooting the breeze and, and collecting reagents, that's cool. You should do that. But you're looking at, if you farm every day for eight hours, almost four full days of doing nothing but farming reagents. I wonder, I have to say, maybe I say I suspect, but I, I'll just, we'll leave it at wonder. I wonder if this isn't just simply a bunch of make work that's being substituted for content. Kings out, guys, you know, you know I love you. You know I do. I spend a lot of time here. But what's up with this? Come on, add a little bit of beef to this bad boy. I want, I want some beef in my hamburger. Not no little thin chicken patty, and that's what we got here. Please. If it's going to take 30 hours, okay, fine. It's going to take 30 hours, average. At least make it better than this. Give it a little more juice. Come on. I mean, we, we don't have any robes to speak of in this in this episode or in this edition. No new, really, there's robes, but they're not better than what we have at all. You know, beef something up. If you're going to make us spend this much time crafting this, I personally, I don't find it worth the 30 hours. But... This is going to be a matter of opinion, and it's going to be up to you. Guys, there it is. That's what it takes to make this wand. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out at all, please hit that like button, a good heart smash, subscribe, share, yell my name to everybody you know, because I would love to see more of you around here. If you want to hang out with me live on Twitch, I stream pretty much every evening in the world. I start usually around 9.30 to 10 p.m. Eastern. 
We're doing a lot of things like farming masks and stuff like that to help people out. So by all means, come on out. You are welcome to hang out and or farm if you need to. It's a great community and you're more than welcome. Until next time, this is Skeleton Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace. Hey, what's up, gamers? Skeleton Mystic. I have today with me the new Imperia Castaways Bundle Pet, the Puffy Packfish. Here he is, as as you can expect. He's about the biggest-eyed, cutest little thing ever, because it seems to be that's the kind of pets that 